the light, and Zavalon spoke for the darkness, and these things were agreed. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, where I cover vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. In this video, I'm going to be diving into the movie Night Watch from 2004. This is a supernatural horror film that was released in Russia. It is loosely based on the 1998 novel The Night Watch, known as Nochnoi Dozer in Russian. This film was Russia's highest grossing film ever when it was released. It has since been surpassed, but it's still known as a classic. It's an insanely intricate and deep world that I will do my best to explain. It involves a war between good and evil, supernatural beings known as Others, vampires, werewolves, an alternate dimension known as the Twilight, and so much more. I've been wanting to cover this movie for a while, but there's so much to it that I wanted to make sure I did it justice. I feel like a lot of people don't know about this movie because it's not on any streaming services as far as I know, and it's very hard to find an English version. I've seen it in the past, but this time when I went to re-watch the film, it took me two days to find a version of the film that had English subtitles. Not even an English dub, just English subtitles. Also, there was a sequel film called Daywatch that came out in 2006, but in this video I will be focusing mostly on the first film. Anyway, without further ado, let's dive into the world of Nightwatch. Before we get started, I'm happy to announce that Aura has returned to sponsor another video. They provide a service I think is really important. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you, resulting in all those annoying spam emails and phone calls. Your full name, email, home address, even health records, your relatives, it's all out there for strangers to find. That's why I've started using today's sponsor, Aura. They show me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submit opt-out requests. When you submit an opt-out, they legally have to oblige. Aura has already taken my information off 12 sites and is working on six more, and it's just getting started. I've seen people with over 100 brokers that had their data. This doesn't just cut down on spam. It also protects me from hackers who could use this information to access my other social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura provides all the protection you need with built-in antivirus, VPN, the ever-useful password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more, without having several different apps. I found it very easy to set up, and best of all, you get everything for one affordable price. I value my privacy a lot, and so should you. To get a two-week free trial, check out Aura.com slash Lawlands. Link will also be in the description below. Thanks so much to Aura for sponsoring another video. The story of Nightwatch begins nearly a thousand years ago. Some people are born as something called Others. These people appear like normal humans, but they're not. They have special abilities. They can be witches, sorcerers, shapeshifters, and more. It's said the Others are as varied as the stars in the sky. They are soldiers in an eternal war between dark and light. Light Others protect mankind from the Dark Others, who would kill and plague the human race. For centuries, these light and dark others were in a constant battle, killing each other whenever they could. One day, the two armies met at a bridge by chance. Neither would give way, and this led to the great battle between light and dark. Gesser, the leader of the light, and Zavalon, leader of the dark. Bloody and merciless. The battle was bloody and ruthless. Zavalon was reveling in the violence, but Gesser, leader of the light, was in despair. He realized that they are too evenly matched, and this battle would result in the death of everyone. He frees his time and place, and the two leaders walk to the center of the battle. They decide to end the massacre, and come up with a different way to solve their problem. Two organizations would be formed, Night Watch and Day Watch. Night Watch is made up of the light side, and their job is to police the Dark Others. And the Day Watch is a group of Dark Others that police the light side. There are many rules in place for both sides, if anyone breaks the rules, then the watch team will be dispatched to deal with them. As an example of this, if a vampire wants to turn someone, they have to apply for a license. If a vampire turns someone without a license, the night watch will show up and arrest them, or kill them if they have to. The watch teams would maintain the balance for many centuries. However, eventually an other would be born, stronger than any before him, that would change the balance forever. I will talk about the different types of others soon, but first I want to talk about the twilight. The beings known as Others have the special ability to enter a realm known as the Twilight. The first to discover this were shaman and old wise men. Probably through meditation or concentration, they found a way to step into the Twilight, a world beneath our own. It's like an alternate dimension, 
another layer of reality. It appears almost identical to our world, but like a dark reflection. In the book, it's called the Twilight, but in the movie, they refer to it as the Gloom. So from now on, I will refer to it as the Gloom. There's multiple layers to the Gloom, and the more powerful the other is, the deeper they can go. The most powerful other can access the fifth level. Who knows how many levels there could be inside the Gloom. It becomes increasingly hard to survive because the Gloom feeds off the life force of the other. If you become too weak while inside the Gloom, it will consume you. In the film, it looks like you die. But in the book, they explain that this means you will just be trapped in the gloom forever. Let's take a look at how someone becomes a light or dark other. In the Watch series, there's light others, dark others, and also a third group called the Inquisition that police both the light and dark. But they're not featured in the film at all, so I'm not really going to talk about them. An other cannot be created. You have to be born that way. It seems to be completely random. Your parents don't have to be others. Usually at some point in their life, an other will accidentally enter the gloom for the first time. And this is when they'll find out that they're an other. When they enter the gloom that first time, they choose whether to align themselves with light or dark. But this decision is more subconscious. They don't really get to pick. Once they access the gloom for the first time, they will also gain some kind of ability. It's like entering this realm awakens the power within them. The others draw their power from the gloom, and there's multiple powers that you can get. There's magicians, sorcerers, healers, shapeshifters, vampires, werewolves, incubus, witch, and a golem. In the novel, it's suggested that the others can choose what ability they want to draw on from the gloom. Whereas in the movie, it seems like each person that enters is randomly assigned their ability. The leader of the light is Gesser. He is widely known as one of the most powerful others. He is over a thousand years old and can perform many different kinds of magic, even healing. He is the one I was talking about earlier who can go to the fifth level of the gloom. If most people entered this level, they would instantly be consumed. The leader of the dark others is Zavalon. He is also over a thousand years old, around the same age as Gesser. His true form is very demonic compared to what we see in the movie. This is caused by how much time he has spent in the gloom. It seems that Dark Others spend more time in the gloom than Light Others. The movie shows us a brief glimpse of that war between the Light and Dark, and that they came to an agreement. The rest of the movie takes place centuries later in the present day. We follow the main character, Antoine. He is having problems with his girlfriend and seeks out the help of a witch. I'm assuming he must have been referred here by someone. The woman says, I can make your girlfriend love you again, and leave that new guy behind. We can tell Antoine doesn't really believe anything she's saying, but he's going along with it for now. She breaks the news that his girlfriend is pregnant, but it's not his. She needs to kill the baby in order for the ritual to work. How did she even know about the pregnancy before Antoine? I guess she must have some kind of abilities. He agrees to let her kill the infant and that he will take this sin on himself, not realizing this woman is 100% serious. She begins the ritual or spell by taking a small amount of Antoine's blood and mixing it with some household ingredients. He drinks the mixture and we immediately see his girlfriend break up with her new boyfriend. The witch says, now it's time to take care of the brat. She begins to chant while squeezing and moving her hands like she's crushing something. There's even flashes of blood on her hands. Antoine seems to be caught in some kind of trance and can't say anything. We can see that somewhere else, his girlfriend is writhing around in pain on the ground. So this ritual is really working. Antoine finally has the ability to yell no, and he's thrown back against the wall with an unseen force. When this happens, the color of the world around Antoine immediately shifts to a darker color. As he gains his bearings, he can see that two men are on the floor holding the witch. They are trying to stop her from clapping her hands, because if she does, the ritual of killing the child will be complete. The witch enchanted a doll in her house to be some kind of protector. She calls for the doll and it grows spider legs and attacks the men. This allows her to momentarily get her hands free and she almost claps, but they stop her just in time. Well, actually their partner does. This is the first time we get to see a shapeshifter. Each shapeshifter can only take one form. They cannot change into whatever they want. So this shapeshifter is basically a were tiger. The witch is arrested by Nightwatch and found guilty of trying to violate the truce. 
Article 13, Paragraph B. Conspiracy and Premeditated Attempt to Assassinate. This is when the men realize that Antoine can see them. They are also able to somehow quickly recognize that Antoine is what's known as a seer. Somebody who can see visions of the future. It's funny because this guy says, oh great, not another a-hole with visions of the future. But then we find out that this guy is also a seer. They tell him don't try to win the lottery or anything though. You can't control your visions. Antoine is confused and disoriented. He wonders where he is and why it's so dark. One of the men says, you've slipped into the gloom, a place only others can go. We fast forward 12 years later and Antoine is a good but reluctant member of the Night Watch. So he's aligned with the light side. The first thing we get to see him do as a member is hunt down a vampire. Before going out for the night, Antoine goes to his fridge and pulls out a jar of blood, but it's empty. He has to go get more from a local butcher. The person who brings Antoine here is his neighbor, and he's a vampire, but not the one he's hunting. After Antoine leaves, the butcher says, why did you bring him here? The boy thought Antoine was one of them, a vampire, but the butcher says no, he's a light other, and the only time the Night Watch drinks blood is when they're hunting us. By drinking blood, Antoine is able to channel the vampire, gaining some of their abilities, a set of fangs, and a thirst for blood. The vampire he is chasing has been charged with turning someone without a license. He's also been hunting, which is not allowed. Vampires have an ability named The Call. They use this to lure humans in to feed on. It's basically telepathy, with the person hearing the vampire's voice in their head. They are put in a state where they will obey any command they are given. The vampire Antoine is trying to find is using this on a boy named Jagger. So he's going to follow the boy to find the vampire. Antoine follows the boy onto a train, and the vampire thirst almost gets the best of him. He's able to see all the veins in the boy's body. He manages to not feed on him though, and finds the vampires in an old rundown building. Vampires are considered lower in the Dark Other hierarchy, although they still seem quite strong. It is said by feeding on blood that a vampire can become extremely dangerous for short periods of time. All vampires are Dark Others. There's no such thing as a light vampire. Also, becoming a vampire is kind of a cheat to becoming an other. Like I said before, a human cannot become an other. You have to be born that way. However, you can be turned into a vampire, which automatically makes you a dark other. So I guess actually there is a way to become another. Normal others are not immortal. They live and die just like humans. However, vampires are immortal and undead. This means they most likely have no heartbeat and a cold body temperature. They must feed on blood to survive. They can eat normal human food, but it has no taste, similar to the vampires from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. As for appearance, they have pale skin, two fangs, and other than that, appear identical to humans. They are faster and stronger though. Since Antoine is channeling the vampire, he can put up a pretty good fight, although he is stabbed with some scissors. This vampire is able to slip in and out of the gloom with ease. When someone enters the gloom, it's like they just turned invisible. Then they can move and reappear somewhere else. It seems like Dark Others are able to spend more time in the gloom, or like to spend more time in the gloom. While inside, others have access to their full power. However, you must be careful not to expend yourself too much or you'll be consumed. Nothing is mentioned about vampire weaknesses like stakes to the heart, garlic, silver, or holy objects. Similar to the original Dracula, these vampires are able to walk in the sun, although they do avoid it as much as possible. Even though it doesn't burn them, they still could be weakened during the day. I also found out from the book that vampires are only supposed to feed on donated blood. If they want to hunt, they need to obtain a license. Also, apparently male vampires can only father one child. That means that vampires are undead, but can somehow still reproduce. Before Antoine went to capture the vampire, he grabbed a special flashlight. The person on the phone tells him to make sure he uses the right bulb. I guess there's different colored lights that do different things. This is like a gun for the Night Watch. The light he uses burns vampires, causing their skin to blister. Like I said before, these vampires are not burned by sunlight, so there must be some other reason the light is harmful to vampires. Maybe it's harmful to all Dark Others. Antoine manages to kill the vampire and saves the young boy named Jaeger, but the girl that was unlawfully turned got away. 
Although he was semi-successful, he is currently bleeding to death because the vampire stabbed him. I guess channeling the vampire didn't give him any healing abilities. Or maybe vampires don't have healing abilities at all. The vampire was killed with lights on the truck. They must have the same special bulb as Antoine's flashlight. When the vampire dies, a bunch of bugs come out of his head. And there's usually bugs in the gloom. I'm not sure what the connection is there, other than death perhaps. His team arrives at the building shortly after and lifts him inside. These are the same guys that arrested the witch 12 years ago. I guess Antoine has been working with them ever since. They drive this weird truck that kind of reminds me of the Ghostbusters car. I could definitely tell they were trying to make some kind of recognizable vehicle. When they're on their way to Antoine, there's this random Fast and Furious sequence with them racing toward the building. On their way there, Zavalon walks into the street and they almost run him over. At the last minute, he uses telekinesis to flip the vehicle right over him and they keep driving like nothing happened. After picking up Antoine, the group calls Gesser and lets him know that Antoine killed the vampire instead of arresting him like he was supposed to. And he's badly wounded. Gesser tells them to bring him here immediately. They bring Antoine straight to him and Gesser tells everyone to leave. This is when we learn that Gesser is not only a sorcerer, but he's able to heal Antoine's stab wound. Gesser scolds Antoine telling him he should have entered the gloom and just arrested the vampire, not killed him. However, he admits that lately, something has been off. When Antoine goes home, his neighbor is angry that he killed the vampire. I wasn't sure how he would possibly know that, but the boy says, we can all feel it when a member of the darkness dies. The Watch series also features werewolves. Unfortunately, none are featured in the films. They are considered a dark shapeshifter. So similar to vampires, there's no such thing as a light werewolf. We see shapeshifters on the light side able to take many forms, like an owl or tiger. But if you're a dark shapeshifter, you're a werewolf. They are large humanoid wolves, similar to something like Underworld. Their abilities or transformations have nothing to do with the full moon. They can transform at will and are very strong, fast, with razor sharp claws and teeth. Just like a vampire, I presume they would need a license to feed on humans or turn someone into a lichen. Now I want to talk about the kid that Antoine saved, Jaeger. Antoine is talking to him and asks him how old he is. And he's 12. Remember when that witch almost killed that unborn child 12 years ago? Well, this is him. And it turns out that it actually is Antoine's son which brings up the question of why the witch would lie about this, and to be honest, I'm not sure. Gesser speaks of a prophecy. He says that a long time ago, there was a virgin woman in Byzantium, also known as the Eastern Roman Empire. She was cursed, and the power of the curse opened up a vortex of damnation. From here, the first forces of darkness were born, and the light rose up to stop them. The root of the Great War was caused by a human cursing another human. Everywhere this woman would go, death would follow. If she pet a puppy, it would die. If she held a bird, it would drop to the ground. Everyone she came in contact with would be stricken with misery. It's said that one day, this virgin will return and be cursed again. She will herald another battle, the final battle between good and evil, and the balance will be broken forever. In this time, the Great Other will appear, the Chosen One. If he takes this out of light, light will triumph. But wise men say, he will choose the darkness because it's easier for a man to destroy the light inside himself than to defeat the darkness all around him. The prophecy is coming true. It's already begun. It turns out the Chosen One, or the Great Other, is Jaeger, Antoine's son that he almost killed. It doesn't take long for us to see him do something abnormal, even for an other. The first time Jaeger slips into the gloom, it doesn't go how it usually does. Jaeger slips into the gloom, so Antoine and another Night Watch member goes in after him. Jaeger is confused, much like Antoine was the first time he was in the gloom. They don't have much time, because he's weak and will be consumed quite quickly. This must be because he's a child, because Antoine was able to stay in the gloom for quite a while the first time he entered. Within a minute, Jaeger is already being consumed by the gloom. They're trying to pull him out, but they can't. The girl yells at Antoine to make an offering. This is when he suddenly cuts his arm and the blood is drawn out of him. Somehow this allows Jaeger the ability to get out of the gloom. We are told the gloom feeds off the life force of people. 
So I guess by Antoine making an offering to the gloom, it decided to feed off him instead of Jaeger. Gesser must be insanely strong to go to the fifth level of the gloom, considering the first level seems pretty dangerous as it is. Like I explained in the beginning, normally when someone goes into the gloom, they either align with good or evil. But somehow, Jaeger was able to enter the gloom and leave without choosing a side. This must be because he's so young that he truly hasn't made up his mind yet. In the second movie, we find out Jaeger will not become the Great Other until he turns 15. On his birthday, he will have unthinkable power thrust upon him. The ability to destroy cities. Maybe the world. It's important for Antoine to lead Jaeger down the right path. The fate of the world depends on it. Let's just hope that he doesn't find out that his father tried to kill him when he was an unborn child. That's my video on the movie Night Watch. I would like to cover the sequel Daywatch at some point and dive more into the supernaturals and the results of the war between good and evil. So let me know if you'd want to see that. In this video, I just wanted to give a general overview of the world and the creatures in it without giving away too much about the story. I don't think I'll be able to put into words how strange and fascinating this world is. The visual effects are also really interesting and creative, making it feel even more like its own universe. If you haven't seen this movie or the sequel, I 100% recommend it. It might be tough to find an English dub, but you should be able to find one with subtitles. I'm pretty sure the full movie's on YouTube, but I think it's all in Russian. If there's any other movies or TV shows you want me to cover, leave them in the comments below. I always read through them. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. As always, an extra big thanks to all my members for going out of their way to support the channel. It means a lot. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.